Julian Assange, the man behind WikiLeaks. Many people consider Julian Assange to be a hero, a whistleblower, and an icon for ending the wars. In this presentation today, we will expel some of these myths and show you how WikiLeaks, run by Julian Assange, is actually not as transparent and independent as they claim to be. The validity of Julian Assange and the WikiLeaks organization is something there is not a lot of consensus on in the truth community. So it's my hopes that the information I'm about to show you will help you see how much of a fraud and a puppet of the Zionists Julian Assange really is. According to an article by censored journalist Jonathan Azazia back in 2010, WikiLeaks is anything but legitimate. Quote, Disinformation is defined as misinformation that is deliberately disseminated in order to influence or confuse rivals. It is used by governments to mislead and brainwash their citizen populations, instigate wars, and blackmail foreign regimes. It is the ultimate instrument of the media. The most effective disinformation is that which is comprised of falsehoods as well as facts. WikiLeaks, founded by Julian Assange, fits this description perfectly, right down to the letter. Seemingly overnight, it has become one of the biggest whistleblowing agencies in modern history. In reality though, it is one of the biggest disinformation projects in modern history. And it may be the most dangerous because it is masquerading as an organization of truth. The information released by WikiLeaks isn't new. It isn't groundbreaking. It doesn't hurt the US as much as people think, it's fractional really, and it is overloaded with as much propaganda as the day-to-day -day Zionist media is. This propaganda is benefiting someone, and that someone is the illegal usurping entity of Israel. Even the Israeli government itself thinks so." Unquote. What Jonathan is referring to when he claims the Israeli government thinks WikiLeaks is good for Israel, is comments made by Benjamin Netanyahu himself, who claimed that the WikiLeaks revelations were a good thing for Israel. According to Barak Ravid of Haaretz News back in 2010, quote, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says newly leaked US diplomatic memos about the Saudi king offer clear proof that the Arab world agrees with his country's assessment that Iran is the chief danger to the Middle East." Unquote. Netanyahu elaborated his claims by adding, quote, Every Israeli leader has known for years that the dispatches are likely to leak out, so we adapted ourselves to the reality of the leaks, he said. That has a bearing on who I invite to meetings. No classified Israeli material was exposed by WikiLeaks. Netanyahu said. As it turns out, Netanyahu was right. There is still to this day not a single leak from WikiLeaks that exposes Israel. There may be thousands of documents that mention Israel, but none of them seem to implicate Israel in anything serious. The Israeli newspaper Ma'ariv has reported Israel's former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has publicly said the September 11th attacks have been good for Israel. Netanyahu said, quote, we're benefiting from one thing, and that is the attack on the Twin Towers and Pentagon and the American struggle in Iraq. End quote. Netanyahu, Netanyahu then reportedly said these events, quote, swung American public opinion in our favor. <coughs> Alan Sabrowski, PhD, University of Michigan, is a 10-year U.S. Marine Corps veteran and a graduate of the U.S. Army War College. On the 8th of December 2010, after the original WikiLeaks release, Alan Sabrowski claimed, quote, It is surprising how little damaging material is there. Julian Assange has fulsome praise for Benjamin Netanyahu. The leaks represent the message Israel and its partisans in the US government want the world to hear, believe and accept. The message coming across in the US diplomatic cables could have been designed and drafted by Avigor Lieberman. And who knows, it may have been." Unquote.
And at that point, we were taken for another round of questioning, this time related to our allegedly being members of Mossad. The fact of the matter is, we are coming from a country that experiences terror daily. Our purpose was to document the event. Perhaps one of the biggest red flags regarding Julian Assange is his views regarding 9-11. He feels that the conspiracy surrounding 9-11 truth is a waste of time. Back in 2010, in a Turkish news interview, Julian Assange made the following statement, quote, I am constantly annoyed that people are distracted by false conspiracies, such as 9-11, when all around we provide evidence of real conspiracies for war or mass financial fraud. Unquote. Now ask yourself this question. What sort of political whistleblower and truth seeker makes a claim like that? 9-11 truth is very much a litmus test for most people and it seems to be one Assange completely fails. Assange gets very nervous around the question on 9-11 and his views seem to line up almost identical to what the official narrative is. When the question of 9-11 was sprung on him during a live questionnaire, this is what the nervous man had to say in response. And you could tell he wasn't happy about the question. Um, since we are now living in the wake of consequences of 9-11, do you feel now, with the media failing us, that we need a new investigation of 9-11? Thank you. I mean, it's, it's a... Interesting question. The original investigation of 9/11 was, of, of course, you can see from the from what which documents were restricted, uh, <coughs> compromised by uh, the United States diplomatic uh, and power relate power sensitivities concerning the role of Saudi Arabia, perhaps to a degree, uh, the role of a couple of other uh, states, um, but. I, I don't think, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously all these things should be investigated. It, it, it's, it's quite interesting to see um, after uh, 50 years, uh, new JFK uh, documents coming out. There's not so much interest there directly con concerning the murder, but the, the uh, political environment, but the geopolitical environment, the attempts by the United States to assassinate other people, for example. Uh, yeah, is is quite quite revealing. On on the on the nine eleven issue generally, uh, yeah, I I don't I don't think it is particularly important uh, in the sense that uh, every day or, or every few weeks, WikiLeaks and and some other publishers uh, publish proof of very serious existing conspiracies. That are happening right now or just a couple of years ago uh, in order to start wars or steal billions of dollars uh, th these things i think can have more of a, a change there, there's a, a certain view in relation to 9 11 that it, it's some kind of holy grail that would, would shake the, the existing order of things i don't think it would even if it came out that there were you know, some rogues uh, rogue agents uh, involved and that, that's how it would be positioned, no matter who it was. Apparently 9-11 truth is of no real importance to Mr. Assange. Also note how he names Saudi Arabia and says nothing about Israel. A good Jewish friend of Julian Assange is a man's name Israel Shamir, who was one of the people working for WikiLeaks at the time. Mr. Shamir is also a disinformation agent who claims, quote, I cannot accept the Mossad and the Jews are the perpetrators behind 9-11, unquote. Jonathan Azazia, the censored journalist we mentioned earlier, claims, quote, It is shameful that Assange is annoyed by those seeking truth regarding the reason why 1.5 million innocents are dead in occupied Iraq, 1.2 million innocents are dead in occupied Afghanistan, and thousands more innocent men, women and children are dead in occupied Palestine, Lebanon, Pakistan, Yemen and Somalia. 9-11 is anything but a false conspiracy. There is overwhelming evidence that the American and Israeli officials didn't just have foreknowledge of the event, but planned the attack and carried it out. 
It was a Mossad CIA false flag used to protect the Zionist entity from any future military threat and expand the parasitic hegemony of the US and the illegitimate Tel Aviv regime throughout the world via the Zionist-inspired War on Terror. Someone insulting the seekers of 9-11 truth, slandering the righteous movement of Hezbollah, spreading the propaganda about Iran which adds to the demonization campaign levied against the Islamic Republic by the Zionist lobby and the Zionist media, and deliberately leaving out Israeli crimes in occupied Afghanistan and Iraq, is no freedom fighter. Such person is a liar and a propagandist." Unquote. So, what about all the cables WikiLeaks released about 9-11? Some of you might recall back in 2009, WikiLeaks published 570,000 messages captured during the chaos of 9-11. But was there anything in there that questioned the official narrative? No, there wasn't. According to The Guardian who covered this story, quote, Most of the messages put out by WikiLeaks have nothing to do with the events of that fateful day being routine service messages and random communications between individuals, but amid the fog of thousands of messages, they build up a picture of a preeminent event in history. The website has declined to reveal how it obtained the documents. All it would say on the subject was, quote, It is clear that the information comes from an organization which has been intercepting and archiving US national telecommunications since prior to 9-11, unquote. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. And I think that people sitting right next door in Iran, young people, uh, and many others will say, the time of such regimes, of such just bots, is gone. There is a new age, something new is happening. is that every day that passes, Iran gets closer and closer to nuclear bombs. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Following the events of 9-11, the war on terror began with the bombing of Afghanistan, which seemed the obvious choice of the warmongering neocons. However, the war would eventually spill over into Iraq, which as far as we could tell, had nothing to do with September 11. This is where the Iraqi WMD's narrative was invented. WikiLeaks Iraq war documents reveal that, for years after the invasion, US troops continue to find chemical weapons labs, encounter insurgent specialists in toxins, and undercover weapons of mass destruction. This was the Bush administration's most infamous rationale for invading Iraq. Despite UN investigators finding no evidence that Iraq was producing weapons of mass destruction, Israel had a plan to destabilize the Middle East and spread disinformation about Iraq's weapon of mass destruction capabilities. According to The Guardian, quote, In 2002, the former head of the Mossad intelligence agency, Ephraim Halvi, told a closed meeting of NATO that there were clear indications that Iraq had renewed its efforts to build weapons of mass destruction after the UN weapons inspections were halted in 1998. He also said Iraq had preserved elements of its ability to manufacture chemical and biological weapons." Unquote. The destabilization of the Middle East was a necessary part of the Odid Yanon plan, a plan to create Greater Israel, which consists of most of the Middle East. However, this plan to occupy and capture the oil-rich region was impossible without first destabilizing the surrounding regions of Israel at the cost of the American taxpayer. Did WikiLeaks expose any of this plan for a greater Israeli state at the cost of millions of innocent lives? No, 
it didn't. In fact, what WikiLeaks did do was support the neokinistic propaganda. WikiLeaks actually released cables that suggested Iraq did in fact have weapons of mass destruction and that the CIA had proof. In hindsight, we know for a fact that Iraq still has never been proven to have any weapons of mass destruction, and it's a notion that has been thoroughly, thoroughly debunked. If this doesn't prove to you that WikiLeaks is about selling war and not peace, let us reflect on the testimony of General Wesley Clark, retired four-star US Army General, Supreme Allied Commander of NATO during the 1999 War on Yugoslavia. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me in. He said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. So go through the countries again. Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran. The war on terror was never about liberating the Middle East. It was always about preparing the way for the Yodid Yanon plan. The Zionist ambitions of ruling the world from Jerusalem. Journalist Jonathan Azazia claimed back in 2010 that WikiLeaks cables on Afghanistan were manufactured propaganda. Quote, the first major leak released earlier this year by Assange was about occupied Afghanistan in the form of almost 92,000 documents. These documents included secret files about civilian killings by the US and NATO, along with boogeyman stories about the long dead Osama bin Laden, garbage regarding the Taliban acquiring ground-to-air missiles, and plenty of lies about Pakistan's intelligence, the ISI. There wasn't a single document about the Israeli training of the Taliban, the massive drug profiteering by the Mossad, the CIA, and the US puppet Hamid Karzai and his brother, Karzai's connections to UNICAL and the Zionist war criminal Henry Kissinger, the clandestine Israeli business operations set up to take control of the oil fields in neighbouring Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Kazakhstan, or the Russian Jewish mafia, fully protected by the Zionist entity, selling guns to US-backed Afghan warlords. Why weren't any of these massively important, critically damning events and operations mentioned? Because by doing so, it would incriminate the already internationally condemned Zionist regime. Journalists, bloggers and activists from occupied Afghanistan and abroad have been reporting on the vast civilian casualties in Afghanistan since US intervention began more than 30 years ago. WikiLeaks revealed nothing that wasn't already known. However, it did reinforce the Zionist propaganda regarding the illegal war on terror." Unquote. In fact, if you look at the timing of the Afghan war logs releases, it takes us to the 25th of July 2010. Four months later, we have the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring was a series of anti-government protests uprisings and armed rebellions that spread across North Africa and the Middle East in late 2010. A lot of this was manufactured by the CIA and the Mossad in a joint effort to further destabilize the Middle East and oust leaders out of power through a coup d'etat operation. 
We also know that Tunisia's former president, Ben Ali, was attacked by WikiLeaks prior to the opening of the Arab Spring. In fact, much of WikiLeaks' propaganda was used to justify the regime changes occurring across the Middle East and North Africa. Assange and WikiLeaks were used by the CIA and its friends to start the Arab Spring, and it was very effective. To this day, Ben Ali is still in exile and cannot return to Tunisia. It should also be noted that the Iraqi war logs, which gained more publicity than the Afghan war leaks, was released in packages to pre-selected media outlets like The Guardian and the Al Jumeirah Journal. In the midst of the Iraqi war leaks were cables that put the death toll in Iraq at around 66,000. Which of course is ridiculous propaganda designed to strengthen the Zionist and warmongering neocon position. To once again cite journalist Jonathan Azazi on the topic of the Iraqi war logs back in 2010, this is what he had to say. Quote, These accusations sound like concoctions dug up from dungeons of the Zionist think tanks and lobby organisations salivating for the destruction of the Islamic Republic not the work of whistleblowers attempting to expose corruption and disseminate truth. These accusations further the Zionist case for striking Iran militarily. These accusations are promoting more war, not peace. WikiLeaks must not have gotten the memo about civilian casualties in occupied Iraq. They are nowhere near 66,081. They have eclipsed the 1.5 million mark. Anything less than this, especially a number as low as the one presented by WikiLeaks, is a classic misreporting aimed at protecting the United States government and its collaborators. That is an insult to the 5 million Iraqi orphans and the 5 million Iraqi refugees. It is a slap to the face of the dead Iraqis whose names will never be known because they were incinerated by US and Israeli weaponry. And the notion that US soldiers found weapons of mass destruction in Iraq after the Iraq had WMD's myth has been thoroughly debunked as Zionist designed propaganda over and over again is frankly infuriating. The only weapons of mass destruction that exist in Iraq are the Mark 77, white phosphorus and thousands of tons of depleted uranium used in Basra, Baghdad and Fallujah by the terrorist army of the US and strategically placed Mossad agents of Israel. Unquote. If you consider all of the pre-war rhetoric surrounding Iraq, it's very much the same as what we are seeing today on the topic of Iran. Coup attempts, provocation to war and slanderous lies, all designed to drive support for Israel and to occupy the last of the seven countries pointed out by General Wesley Clark in 2007. There has been documentation of a very strange relationship occurring in Syria, especially in the Golan Heights, a Syrian landmass currently occupied by Israel. ISIS never seems to attack Israel, who is right next door. Instead, it seems Israel is constantly getting busted, dropping off cargo, medical supplies, weapons, and much more to ISIS, who are operating freely within the Israeli-occupied land. But according to Julian Assange, Israel is not even worth a mention. This oil and natural gas-rich area, known as the Golan Heights, is also currently being drilled by a Rothschild-backed corporation called Genie Energy. The rights were given to them illegally, directly by Israel. Ever since the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, and the war on Syria began, WikiLeaks has been pushing out a narrative which benefits Israel and attempts to expose those who are directly being attacked by Israel. There doesn't seem to be a single leak which exposes Israel as having anything to do with the occupation of its neighbouring regions, or Israel being the only nation that actually benefits from a war on terror. Instead, we are fed dribble about how Assad is butchering his own men, women and children in Syria in the midst of trying to prove to the world and the mainstream media that he is not a dictator. With the Golan Heights and Jerusalem fully occupied, ISIS being exposed as an Israeli operation, the Jewish ambition of Odid Yanon is fully coming to life and WikiLeaks is silent. The Middle East is being destroyed for Israel, 
who is also behind the open borders Marxism we see devastating the West today with immigration. None of these issues are being addressed by WikiLeaks. When discussing the subversion of the West and the murder of millions of people in the Middle East, it is integral to the understanding of these crimes committed to discuss the Israeli role in these crimes. If people are talking about these topics and are failing to mention Israel or Habar Lubavitch, it should be of no surprise that this person, or group, like WikiLeaks, is controlled opposition, a liar, and cannot be trusted. They are anything but whistleblowers. WikiLeaks. This WikiLeaks is unbelievable. Now we learned out through WikiLeaks that Hillary Clinton was paying the protesters. Uh, I know nothing about WikiLeaks. It's not my thing.